Let's see. About there looks good. Remember from yesterday, autotrophs producers, those are the same things. Um, heterotrophs consumers, those are the same things. You can have all these different types of consumers. And then we had something called a food chain, food web, trophic level, primary, secondary, and tertiary. All right, these, these are the words we're gonna to try to address today. Uh, let's see, we'll scroll on down. And we'll get to the part where we started talking about showing the flow of energy, showing the flow of nutrients and energy in an ecosystem. How does it get from an autotroph, a sun, or from the sun, to an autotroph and a producer, and then on to the heterotrophs and consumers? Now, a food web is a, or a food chain is a typical thing. It is simple, unrealistic, and it's unrealistic because it only shows one organism at each step, right? One organism in each step in a food chain is not realistic because other organisms eat different things, right? A fox doesn't necessarily only eat one thing. A polar bear doesn't necessarily only eat fish, right? We see bears and polar bears eat other things like seals and possibly even walruses and whatever it can get its hands on. So that's not necessarily a realistic model. What is a realistic model is a food web. It is a complex, more realistic model a series of interconnected food chains, and it'll have multiple arrows that show the, the path of energy in that, in that ecosystem or in that food chain. All right. Now, food chain, it does go from, um, excuse me here, let me pull this back down. A food chain does go from the sun to the top level consumers, and it usually has three to four transfers of nutrients or energy. Now this is a big thing right here I want you to remember. Energy transfer is very inefficient. That means as you move from one organism to the next in that food chain or in any food web, it is a very inefficient transfer of energy. Typically when you transfer from one organism to the other, right, just say grass to grasshopper, or the grass is eaten by the grasshopper, or the energy from the grass is transferred to the grasshopper. Each time you transfer, you will have energy that is lost in the form of heat. Please make sure you remember that. That is on the EOC, all right? Now, and each step in the food chain is called a trophic level. So in this food chain right here, grass moving to grasshopper, grasshopper moving to frog, frog to the snake, and then snake can be eaten by the hog. In this food chain, you actually have five trophic levels, but it won't usually go beyond that because energy transfer is very inefficient. So at that point, it really doesn't make any sense for something to eat a hog because they're not gonna get much energy from it anyway. It would almost take more energy to catch a hog and eat it than the actual energy you would get from it. Um, and the arrow will point in the direction of the flow of energy, right? So in all of these examples, you know, you do have energy being transferred from the grass to the grasshopper. That same energy or whatever, I guess a small portion of that energy transferred to the frog, energy from the frog to the snake, snake to the hog, same concept. It's all about feeding relationships and how you're getting your energy by consuming another organism, all right? Here you have a food chain. We talked about this one yesterday. Um, energy from the sun is transferred to the grass or to the plants. These plants are known as producers or autotrophs. They are doing photosynthesis. And they do that to make glucose, right? They do that to make some type of sugar. All right, then that sugar or that energy is then consumed by all of these organisms. All of these organisms, right? all of these will be considered to be consumers or heterotrophs. And they differentiate between them based off whether or not they are the first organism to eat, are they the second organism to eat, or are they the third? All you have to do is count from the autotroph or count from the producer. This first one would be a primary consumer. Typically primary consumers are herbivores because they do eat plants. Then you can go to the next organism, that would be a secondary consumer, right? Then you go to the next organism, and that would be a tertiary consumer, right? 
tertiary consumers are usually at the top of the food chain, top of the food web, makes all the sense in the world. All right. Now food webs, uh, this is more or less like a food web, what you see over here on the right. You see this is a series of interconnected food chains. There are multiple food chains in this. Uh, food webs, they are much more realistic, right? They have more than one organism in most trophic levels. Excuse me, I was about to sneeze. And it is a series of interconnected food chains. You must be able to identify an organism's trophic level. This will be on an EOC. And you do so by counting from the producer level, which is what we just did in the previous slide. We counted from the producer level, primary, secondary, tertiary. Let's see if I can get this right. There we go. It's close enough. Uh, there we are. And let's see what else it say here. You never count the plants or autotrophs in your county because they're not going to be a consumer. They would technically be a producer. So let's see if we can actually do this in a food web. Can we count from the producer and determine whether or not it was a primary consumer, a secondary consumer, or a tertiary consumer? All right, and are there more than one organisms in most trophic levels? Make sure you're paying attention here. This is kind of a difficult thing if you don't pay attention, but it's easy if you do. All right, so in this food web, the first thing we want to do is be able to identify all of the autotrophs, right? Those are plants, grasses, shrubs, and stuff like that. So I would say, well, probably corn is an autotroph, a flowering plant is an autotroph, lavender, which smells nice, is an autotroph, and probably mangoes. I know it grows from a tree, so I know a tree is an autotroph. It does photosynthesis to make glucose and sugars. So all of these things would be your autotrophs or producers. Now how do you select which things would be your primary consumers? Well, you have to count from the autotrophs. Anything that basically is an herbivore, or at least an herbivore, would be considered to be primary consumer. So if I count from the corn here, the first thing that eats is a grasshopper. Therefore, it would be a primary consumer. Flowering plant, and from the lavender, the first thing that eats it is a butterfly. All right, so that first transfer of energy goes to the butterfly. From the mangoes, the first thing would be the fruit fly. Right. Now let's just move on. It gets kind of easy. It's not too difficult, but if you haven't paid attention, you won't understand it. Secondary consumers, you go to the second organism. So there's two different food chains here I could follow, by the way. I could go corn, grasshopper to rat, or I could go corn, grasshopper to frog. That's two totally different food chains. But we'll go corn, grasshopper, that's primary consumer, secondary consumer. Primary consumer, secondary consumer. Primary, secondary, primary, secondary, I've got that. Primary, secondary, now the dragonfly would be a secondary consumer because I'm going mangoes, fruit fly, dragonfly. And then there's one more. There are the mangoes, primary consumer, and then the thrush would be a secondary consumer. All right, so that's how you calculate your secondary consumers. Now, finally, you can have your tertiary consumers. We'll do that in a nice, beautiful, we'll go pink. Tertiary, you say one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I'm just following the arrows here. Lavender's the butterfly, butterfly to dragonfly. Oh, this is interesting. All right, here, here's something interesting. Watch this. We did primary and secondary, but now let's watch this tertiary. Lavender to butterfly, butterfly is primary. Dragonfly would be secondary, but now this thrush would become a tertiary if I followed that food chain. So now I want you to notice what you see with this thrush. You see that this thrush <coughs> can actually be a secondary or it could be a tertiary consumer, depending on what food chain you follow. So sometimes they'll ask you a question. 
Can an organism belong to more than one trophic level? The answer to that question is yes, it can. It depends on what food chain you follow inside that food web. Can more than one organism belong to the same trophic level? Well, can more than one organism here be in the primary consumer trophic level? Yeah, matter of fact, you see at least one, two, three. You see three, three organisms, three species that are all part of the primary consumer trophic level, right? And again, can an organism belong to more than one trophic level? Can it be a primary and a secondary? Can it be a secondary and a tertiary? Well, just like you saw right here with the thrush, yes, it can. All right, so make sure you can follow along with the food web because I could possibly ask y'all some questions in the near future and on a test as to how to work this stuff. All right. Now, that's fairly easy. Go back to the vocabulary from yesterday. All of these things should be sorted out by now. We have autotrophs, heterotrophs. We have Heter, uh, excuse me, autotrophs producers. We have heterotrophs consumers. We had all the different types of consumers or heterotrophs, right? How do we display or how do we diagram out the passing on of energy from one organism to the other? Well, we do it in food chains and food webs, right? And then what are my trophic levels? Well, typically there's only gonna be three trophic levels, maybe four. You would have the producer level, right? Which is usually at the very beginning, that would be grass. Then you have a primary consumer, which would typically be a grasshopper. Secondary consumer, which could be, you know, maybe a frog or something like that. And then your final one might be a snake because the snake will eat a frog, all right? So make sure you under understand all of these concepts and uh, make sure you Take a look over these notes before you have any type of test.